tonight. Whack an Atheist with Professor Dave. We are on Rumble, Kent Hovind Official, on Genesis Baptist Church on YouTube, on Odyssey, Kent Hovind Official, and DrDino.com has all the other places where we are. We are right there at uh, Genesis Baptist Church in Lenox, Alabama. Old-fashioned, independent, temperamental, fundamental, right-wing, radical, chicken-eating Baptist Church. We believe God made the world in six days. So let um, me get up here. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. There we are, Lenox, Alabama, straight north of Pensacola. You folks from Minnesota, uh, it's a little chilly here today. It was 50, 45. How was, how was it up there in Minnesota? It was pretty windy before we left, but it, uh, it's going down now. It'll be single digits soon. Single digits soon. Okay, and you brought the whole family. How many kids? There's 13 to 10 are with us. 10 kids with you. Amen. We'll take the tour tomorrow. Okay. Come visit. Dinosaur Adventure Land is free. We think God ought to get the glory <coughs> for his creation. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, so tonight, uh, we did a skeptic guy uh, debate last night. Tonight, Professor Dave. If you want to help our ministry stay open for free, join our 777 Club. M Mr. Nelson, who calls himself Aaron Ra, the sun god, he's an atheist, he says, and he wants to have 666 people support him for a dollar a day. I got to, that's a great idea. Only we got 30 people on staff here. I'd like 777 people to support us for a dollar a day so we can pay all the bills. We're open for free, always have been. If you want to join our 777 Club, go to drdino.com. I don't check on it ever. I don't know who's in it. Don't want to know. Just if you want to help, fine. If not, get out of the way. We're going to do it anyway. Okay, we're going to win souls anyway. Let's see, we're doing this uh, for free. And right there, PayPal, I did that twice in there. Okay, tonight, Professor Dave, Dave Farina, uh, and he really is a good teacher in so many things, but he is off his rocker on evolution. So the whack-a-mole game, you wait till a mole sticks his head up and whack him back down. It's a fun game. It's fast. A mole sticks his head up. You whack him back down as fast as you can. Small children learn to play it and love it. Whack-a-mole game. Adults like it, too. We uh, whack an atheist. We wait for the atheist to stick his head up and say something silly to claim his evolution religion is true, and it's a religion. And we whack him back down with real science. And Christian love, of course, okay? Few we have to whack over and over again because they keep putting their head back up. Oh, well, I taught high school 15 years. I'm used to having to say the same thing 14 times before they get it. And I actually enjoy it. So the winner tonight, Professor Dave. He says, and on this channel, we're going to uh, show we're going to be watching. Uh, by the way, Gutsick Gibbon has never offered to debate me, has she? What happened? I'm willing. Come on, Gutsick Gibbon. Homo sapiens go by the name of Homo sapiens. How did our species come to be? How and when was human civilization developed? The fields that seek to answer these huge questions are anthropology and archaeology. We will study the evolution of hominid species, as well as the remains we use to understand early human civilization. Okay, Dave teaches on chemistry, and he's really good. He teaches on organic chemistry, and he's really good. He teaches on biochemistry. He's good at a lot of teaching stuff. He's good at physical science. I highly recommend his stuff. Against the flat earth, he's really good. But he's loony when it comes to evolution. He believes he came from a rock. So let's go over to Professor Dave. And then, Mark, you tell me when you want to stop or uh, chime in any. And I will come over here, hit play. And let's let Professor Dave talk about his. This is the intro to a series he's going to do on evolution which is going to be from the, uh, if he follows his, what he says he's going to follow in the series, is going to be baloney. Dave, I'll be, debate you anytime. Bring it up, okay? There you go. We humans are a fascinating species of animal, though rather narcissistic. Let's For stop right. reason, oh, oh, the study oh. of humans across... Hang on, let's stop right there. We're not an animal, okay? We're made in God's image. You might think you're an animal. There's something different between humans and animals. Is it okay for the for a human to go next door and kill the neighbor's baby and eat it? Well, no. Is it okay for a lion to go next door and kill the zebra baby and eat it? We're different than the animals, Dave. Don't call us an animal. We're made in God's image. Anyway, go ahead. Space and time has its own field, anthropology. The etymology of the word is Greek, with anthropos meaning human and logos being the study of. This discipline provides a broad perspective that helps us understand the diversity of the human experience within the context of biological and behavioral continuity with other animal species. He's obviously reading something written by somebody else here. <clears throat> 
This is certainly a tall order, as it means we must understand our own evolution and biology. And Dave, if you start with those rose-colored glasses on, you're never going to understand humanity. You've already decided we came from an ape. You've already decided that. There's your problem. Everything from here on is going to be wrong. But we'll help you. We'll help you. We'll straighten you out. Okay. The wide variety of material and behavioral cultures we exhibit and how each of these necessarily interact with one another. Anthropology as a discipline tackles this gargantuan task by partitioning the labor into four subfields. Biological anthropology, which was formerly known as physical anthropology, is the first subfield we will cover, and it concerns the study of human biology within an evolutionary framework. So, do, do you have to study biology in an evolutionary framework? I taught biology for 15 years. Uh, Dave, I think you could study biology from a creation perspective. So you could study the same anatomy and biology. Look, boys and girls, you got a deltoid muscle here that raises the arm this way, and a biceps, and a triceps, and flexors, and extenders, and a radius, and an ulna, and a humerus, and car carpal bones, and metacarpals. And you can look and learn all about anatomy and biology and never talk about evolution. It has nothing to do with the topic of biology. H study human biology within the evolutionary framework. There's your problem. You got to stay in that stupid evolution box. In, in your mind, because that's the only way you can explain things. There's a totally different world out there, Dave. Open the box. Come on out. You'll see. So in a sense, this series will pick up right where the zoology series leaves off, having covered the entire animal kingdom and now focusing on a very small part of that kingdom. Biological anthropology includes several subjects. Paleoanthropology. If you could pause it right there. Search for and study of. Okay, go ahead, Mark. Uh, this is Mark of Seaside Film Labs, and I'm with you as long as the connection holds out. Uh, here, here he seems to be trying to shoehorn almost everything into anthropology, where um, it seems to be like anthropology is supposed to be the study of humankind, and he wants to infer uh, all of the anthropological, uh, paleoanthropological finds as well, which often gets put into anthropology, but. It's like, when does it begin? Like they have uh, chimpanzees, you know, and, and skeletons of chimpanzees here in paleoanthropology. Is that really the study of humans anymore? Like it seems to be getting outside of the box of anthropology or what it was originally intended to be. And anthropology is more like the belief system that they've created surrounding humankind rather than the science of humankind. But that's all yeah, I have to say about that. Right. In their mind, chimpanzees, chimpanzees, apes, everything's involved in the study of anthropology, which is baloney. He's going to name a bunch of big names here. Everybody that's I'm going to skip up a little bit. He, he's naming a bunch of branches of science. And just by putting the big name up there on screen, boy, that proves it's, you know, part of science. Uh, studies of anthropolo anthropology. Uh, let's see. It goes across the world. Let's see. Uh, archaeology, cultural anthropology. He just names a bunch of words to impress people here. Let me get up past that here into the so-called cavemen. There we go. The big picture of anthropology. He says, we're human and our biology and evolution through our material culture. Let me just let him talk here. From our biology and evolution through our material culture and cognition and up to our modern societies today. Anthropology is unique in that it marries the biological and the social a union that will be explored in depth to create a cohesive understanding of the field. Stating where anthropology begins in the annals of time requires that we must first identify where humans begin. This I can do that. See, we're made in God's image in Genesis chapter 1. You guys can't do that. you got to think we slowly evolve through all these ape-like creatures. Okay, Mark, you've been studying each of these uh, th things that he offers as evidence for evolution here. Australopithecus and Homo habilis and all that. What's your thoughts on this? Uh, these creatures they got lined up here. Well, it's become my opinion after several years of personal research and studying these different discoveries that they're not their claim to be. Uh, a lot of the times they were discovered to not be what they had been claimed to be and are reclassified as something else. Um, in the case of the homo groups, you know, pre-human, even these um, pushed into the 
anthropological sector where where really it's beyond humanity and like again it's humanity but i'm really to see what dave brings up or is which paleoanthropological discovery he brings up first because i'd really like to hit that with you because i've definitely studied these and i'd like to see if he brings up lucy or the mh1s or uh there's really only seven skeletons of the australopithecine that to mention you know of the entire species and then and then you have beyond that it goes to homo and then to human so like the the homo group uh these are all claimed to be uh cavemen neanderthal uh uh uh, uh, uh what was the one we mentioned just a second ago the homo uh ergaster the homo, homo yeah. um how, the homo yeah so there's a lot of them but the thing Come is, is they're all human yeah. bones and they're using right. they're using like they're using the vast spectrum of human variation like even the larger boned humans and then trying to classify these spines as something beyond humanity so when you have something that looks like a human and you're going to classify it as something else and you're you're um the group that you're drawing from as far as for your information is such a select group of individuals that it kind of like leaves out people with giantism or gigantism you know right. and there's a lot of humans today that are robust so and that's really the 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 uh the 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 underlying feature that we see a lot in these in these homo groups is that they're more robust and they're using that claim about the bones to claim that there's something other than human when in yeah. reality they fit into the human spectrum so okay if people want to get a hold of you how do they get a hold of you mark for more on this if their kids are being taught all this stuff the cavemen kind of stuff how do they get a hold of you for answers well just come to the uh come to your channel and see me in the chat on youtube i'm usually there if you have any okay. questions you can ask me there about any night so <laughs> Well, the Bible says clearly that we were made in God's image, Genesis chapter 1. But these scoffers in the last days want the lie that we started off like a chimpanzee or some kind of ape-like creature, so that we're not in God's image. For example, is this grandpa? Can an ape-like creature slowly turn to a human? Well, maybe so. Huh. So maybe it is possible for an ape-like creature to turn to a human. Okay. Here's what they teach the kids in school. Nothing exploded. Earth was a hot ball of rock billions of years later. The primates slowly evolved out of this rock from, they started off with, just memorize the word farm, fish, amphibian, reptile, mammal. We slowly became a fish and then an amphibian, reptile, mammal, and then modern man evolved. There we have the billions of years ago, the Big Bang. And then here we have earth formed and primates came along and then modern man. The Bible says man brought death into the world. By man came death. By one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. If evolution is true, death brought man into the world. Totally, totally different. Man, God made a perfect world. Man wrecked it. According to evolution, man's going to fix the problem. We are slowly evolving, getting bigger, better, stronger, smarter. And they got these things from Dave here. Humans begin far more difficult tasks than it might seem. So they've got these charts saying that the humans evolve from a Let's see, what do they got here? A protist, a protozoa. Some, some of them have an amoeba, some have a subbacteria. So they slowly became a fish, amphibian, reptile, mammal, and here we are, humans. You can make your own missing link, by the way. All you need is duct tape, some super glue, and a, a cutting tool. You can make your own missing link. Uh, all, use your imagination. All of them are, I'm going to co cover a couple of them here. Mark, and you chime in whenever you'd like. But are apes monkeys? Apes' bodies are quite different from those of other primates. Huh. Gibbons, uh, simagangs, simi simians, okay, uh, 13 uh, of these, and six other great apes. There is no single unique feature that defines an ape, rather a suit of distinguishing characteristics. Apes, our bodies are quite different from other primates. Huh. So here we have, let's see, many taxonomies exist, taxonomies exist for gibbons. Generally accepted, there are 16 species in four groups of gibbons, okay? How about the bonobos? There's only one species of bonobo called the bonobo or pan, okay? Chimpanzees, one species of chimpanzee, two species of uh, gorillas. Orangutans, two species of orangutans. Can orangutans and gorillas interbreed? No, nope, they can't. 
Neither can humans and gorillas or humans and orangutan. See, we're, we're a different kind. We're made in God's image. God said they'd bring forth after their kind. That's all any animal has ever done in the history of the world. No farmer on the planet can tell you he saw his cows or horses or goats or pigs or chickens or anything produce something other than their kind. Cows make baby cows. Dogs make baby dogs. There are no exceptions. But they draw these lines on paper, started off from a single-celled ancestor, became a sponge, and then all these, we're up to humans, here we are. This is propaganda. This isn't science. They make these charts, and the kids have to study this stuff. And they, wow, it's in the textbook. Look at that beautiful chart. Must be true. we got to be related to Lucy. There it is. We have a common ancestor. We've got a skull display here at Dinosaur Adventureland, if you want to come down and see the stuff. When you find the skull of an animal, you don't know that it's turning into something else. They think they're wise, but they're fools, the Bible says. And we could talk for an hour on that, the fools. I want to get to some of the so-called cavemen here. Let's see, right here. These are the cavemen they use. This whole chart is complete baloney. That we started off like a little bitty chimpanzee, getting bigger, better, stronger. This article said he's the daddy of us all. This is silly. You don't know he's the daddy of anybody. When you find bones in the dirt, all you really know is it died. <laughs> but they run these articles, Smithsonian, the mother of all mammals. Oh, this little animal like a shrew. I see. Look, it's just logic 101. If you find a fossil in the dirt, all you really could prove is it died. You can't prove it had any kids, and you sure can't prove it had kids that lived. And you can't prove it had kids that lived that reproduced, or kids that lived and reproduced anything different than their kind. No animal today can do this. Why do we give bones in the dirt the ability to do something that no animal on the planet today can do? Produce offspring other than their kind. It just doesn't happen. Every farmer in the world will tell you cows produce cows, Corn produces corn. No exceptions. None. Zip. Zero. Nada. Doesn't happen. Many people today live in caves. Lot and his daughter lived in a cave in the Bible. Lot had five kings found in a cave. Many people today live in caves. There was the world's most wanted caveman until they found him. There's a former caveman right there. They found him, got him out. IDF is sending a lot of cavemen up to meet their God, mm -hmm. aren't they? Living in these caves and tunnels they built. So when you talk about a cave, there's people today living in caves. In Granada, there's a whole system of people living underground. It's hot down there, so they dig a hole in the ground and live there. It's much cooler. Oh. China has 40 million people living underground in caves. 40 million. Are they cavemen? National Pornographic. Someone's trying to make a monkey out of you. Yeah, they are. Humans should talk like chimps. BBC. Brilliant idea. You Brits come up with great ideas. Let's see. Scientists at the Zoological Society in London are looking for volunteers to talk chimp in their everyday work and home life to test out the theory. Yeah, go to work and talk to the boss. Instead of saying, good morning, boss, say, hoo, hoo, hoo. that'll go over really good, won't it? Talk <laughs> chimp to your boss. I'd just like to add One part of the survey. about, ahead, about something Mark. about apes there. Um, yeah. The, the whole narrative was that we, we used to used to be that we came from apes or evolved from apes. And now it seems that through some kind of semantic game they're playing, it's become that humans are apes. And you're like, you know, so like there was a story of evolution. Now it's just we are apes anyway, because they've changed the definition of ape so much. So, and right. primate. Well, right. What they're trying to do, though, is if, if we are simply animals, I've asked atheists many times in debates I do. If evolution is true and we are simply an animal, how do you tell right from wrong? On any topic, how do you tell right from wrong? Is it wrong to steal? Is it wrong to lie? Is it wrong to kill somebody? If you think those things are wrong, tell me why. Huh? Do the monkeys steal from other monkeys? Do the monkeys steal from each other and steal from everything around them? Sure they do. Will they kill? Yeah. Is it wrong? How come it'd be wrong for a human to do it and not wrong for them to do it? If it's wrong for a human to go next door and kill and eat the neighbor's baby, but it's okay for the lion to do it, why do they say we're just animals? This guy says in the survey, he recommends you wave your arms, brandishing objects, and make yourself appear large to assert authority over others. Yeah, go into the boss at work tomorrow morning, puff out your chest, wave a stick around, hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. see how long your job lasts. You Brits are insane to think that's a thing, brother. Let's see. Volunteers can also bond with their group by grooming each other. Yeah, 
walk up behind somebody and start picking through their hair to pick the bugs out. Mm -hmm. Don't the monkeys do that? Yeah, yeah. Of course, they eat the bug when they get them out, right. A simple hello and greeting friends should be replaced with an extended and throaty, huh, 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 huh. hey, what's up, what's up? <laughs> there are thousands of differences between humans and apes. Humans have chromosomes range in size from 50 to 300 million base pairs. You think that code wrote itself from a dot of nothing exploding? A program I was on today, I showed him where the Big Bang says everything in the universe was in a dot smaller than an atom. I said, I'll give you $1,000 if you can squeeze a cup of water into a dot smaller than an atom, let alone the whole Pacific Ocean. You can't get a cup of water into a dot. You can't compress water. This is so dumb that people believe this, so dumb. Differences between apes and humans. Here we go. Cranial capacity, that's your brain size, of an ape, 400 to 600 cubic centimeters. Humans, 14 to 1,500 cubic centimeters. That's a little different, okay? Apes generally have a slanting forehead and a flat nose. Humans have a high forehead and an elevated nose. They don't have a chin. We have a chin, noticeable. Chimps don't have that. Apes have heavy and protruded eyebrow ridges. Humans have inconspicuous eyebrow ridges. The brain size is different. The forehead is different. The nose is different. I'm sorry. The fact that there are some similarities, we both have eyes, we both have teeth, that would prove a common designer, not a common ancestor. The same guy designed them all. It's a system that works. Binocular vision. With two eyes, you can judge distance. With one eye, you can't judge distance very well. Ah, because you can do the trigonometry in your head just from experience. Apes have longer arms compared with their legs, which can reach below the knees. Hmm. Humans have shorter arms. They have a C-shaped spine is common in apes. Humans have an S-shaped spine. Oh, let's see. Apes have a posable halic. They can, like you can touch your thumb to your all your fingers. Try that with your big toe. Can you touch your big toe to your little toe? Apes can. You can grab a tree branch by their feet. You try that. Pick a low branch to practice on. I highly recommend, okay? Humans have a non-opposable halix, and lateral movement is restricted. It's hard to move your big toe around to touch your little toe and grab something with it. Apes do not have various languages like humans have. Humans have numerous languages to communicate with themselves. Hmm. Quadrupedal means walking on all four. Locomotion, the way you move around. Apes move around on all four, hands and feet. Humans walk on two, bi bipedal. These are a few, you can make a few, they're very few if you can, make simple tools and they can employ them. Apes can dig up a stick and sharpen it and poke it into a hole to get the ants out or something. Humans make all kinds of tools, like a space shuttle and a Boeing 747, right? Uh, the brain, the volume of the brain is less with a small cranium. Uh, humans have smaller jaws. Apes have big jaws. Apes have a narrow pelvic girdle. Humans have a broader pelvic girdle. I've seen some with a real broad pelvic girdle. I saw one at Walmart yesterday, okay? Apes have a V-shaped dental arch. Humans have a crescent-shaped dental arch. The, the dis differences between them goes on and on and on. Anybody that really wants to study anthropology will have to come back with the conclusion. Humans are different than apes and gor gor uh, gorillas and orangutans. We're different. We're designed differently. Four limbs are larger than their hind limbs. In humans, hind limbs are more powerful and developed than the forelimbs. Your legs are stronger than your arms. Not that way with the gorillas. The head is balanced on heavy shoulders and is buried. They got the head kind of down between their neck like this. Our head is erect and balanced on the, uh, and balanced on the neck. Okay. Foramen and magnum of the head is directed backward. Foramen and magnum of their head is directed forward with humans. The jaws are different, very different. Neck muscles are attached to the back of the brain. Neck muscles are attached to the below the brain box with humans. The face is protruding. You can you can just look at them and say, wow. There are thousands of differences. Now, if you want to be related to a monkey or an ape, well, then you could say, wow, look how similar they are. They're very different. Physical differences between apes and humans. The skull is very different. The place where the hole in the base of your skull where the nerve cord goes through is positioned differently in apes and humans. Uh, that's the human on the right there, obviously, and the uh, pan, pan on the left. Any similarities show the same designer made them. So apes don't show any interest in the spiritual world. 
They don't ever pray before they eat. Humans, at least some of them, show an interest in the spiritual world. They thank God for their creation. So these charts are made. Mary Leakey uh, said, all those trees of life with the branches of our ancestors is a lot of nonsense. But you believed in evolution, didn't you, Mary? So humans are just a primate. Here's R. Nelson says, we are apes. In his case, I believe it, okay, but I'm not, right? So they make these family trees. Let's see. Mark, do you have, uh, I'm going to read the names. I don't know if you can see it on screen there. The first one they have on the far left would be uh, lemurs, tarsiers, and uh, uh, bush babies. Then they have monkeys. Where's the one closest to human? Chimpanzee. They've got humans. Yeah. There. Yeah. Yep. Australopithecines. There you go. Right under the word tree. The hobbit family tree. What is the mm -hmm. Australopithecine? Lucy. Tell us about Lucy, brother. Uh yeah, the, the Australopithecus is a, is a hypothetical creature. They found several remains that they believe belong to this animal. And um, beyond that, they've really got nothing but a story right. uh, that they've created around these remains. So uh, the Australopithecus is only represented by several finds. Like I said, there's seven in total. Uh, uh, that would be considered even the skeletal remains. Lucy's the second most complete uh, skeleton of these Australopithecine finds, okay? And that'll tell you how complete they are because she's uh, about set, like 40% complete in the first place. So there's only one more claimed Australopithecine find that's more complete than Lucy. So it's not a case where there's hundreds of individual skeletons that they've found like they've been claiming. You know, there's one or two that are believed to be Australopithecus rather than hundreds of individuals that have been discovered. When it comes to the, um, the Homo, like I was saying, there's the Homo habilis, like you mentioned earlier. Um, there's, there's quite a few Homo discoveries, like as far as um, human looking remains. And some of them are just identical to what we would expect to find today. So. And again, like I said, I don't believe any of these uh, Neanderthal habilis, any of those are what they're claimed to be. I don't believe that Lucy's what she's claimed to be. I don't believe she's a chimpanzee. I think that she's just a collection of remains that they found in the same area, uh, different pieces of evidence that they've decided to be connected that not necessarily should be connected. Right. Um, they didn't find them all together connected like a skeleton, like you might expect, or even in the same proximity like the same exact area like you might find a skeleton that's been buried um or you might expect that it would be connected or close to the rest of the remains they found it over a large area and then they assumed that these certain pieces belong to a single individual so it's it's quite a leap well it's quite a leap right there that lucy lucy was discovered in 1974 in the hadar valley ethiopia right there where the dot is Yo donald johansson had gone to africa on a grant they gave him money and said, you go find a missing link. Two weeks before his grant money ran out, he discovered Lucy. Your Honor, I think that's a little suspicious. I think maybe he's looking to get his grant money renewed, okay? So we can spend all day playing in the dirt, okay? Lucy, he named it Lucy because they were listening to the Beatles song that was popular back then, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which, by the way, deliberately has the initials LSD. Yeah, okay. 1974, Lucy discovered in Africa, National Pornographic. This bone is from a baboon. That's not from a chimpanzee, okay? Lucy, is claimed she was bipedal due to human-like footprints discovered a thousand miles away. Hello. They find some bones, no foot bones found at all, but they claim she could walk upright because a thousand miles away there were human footprints. Does that sound stupid to anybody else? But see what they did, they said the footprints are in the same layer that Lucy's in a thousand miles away. And in their twisted mind, they think these layers are different ages. The geologic column does not exist anywhere in the world. It's baloney. It was made up. They say the top layer is younger. I keep asking them, where'd it come from? How can it be younger? When we tip this thing over, it makes a whole bunch of layers in here. Are the layers different ages? No, they're all the same age. When you shuffle a deck of cards, is the top card now younger? Got a deck here somewhere, did it have? No, they're all the same age. Uh, so the geologic column doesn't exist, but Lucy was found in a layer of rock and a thousand miles away in what they claim is the same layer. 
they find human footprints. They said, well, that proves Lucy could walk upright. I would like to add about that answers in Genesis quote there is that they are talking about Lucy and then the Laetoli footprints where uh, Mary Leakey, she actually found what she claimed was part of Afarensis at the Laetoli site too, which is this mandible piece of a mandible, it's called LH4. But it's, it's the same idea and it wasn't found like at the footprint site. It was found near it and it was found the same layer as that. But to, to assume that those footprints are made by the same animal that you found a mandible of far away from the footprints, even in the same layer, that's still a huge leap yeah. in logic. And that's what's being done here. They're creating a story, uh, their own narrative. They're trying to, they go out, they find pieces of remains of people or um, of chimpanzees, and then they create the story around it. It's not science. It's not honest research. It's storytelling. So... Uh, Institute for Creation Research, ICR, in Dallas. <clears throat> they got a good article. <coughs> John Morris, <coughs> his dad, Henry Morris, did the Defender Study Bible that we sell in our bookstore on drdino.com. They have a great article. It was Lucy Ape Man. Look at specific features of Lucy. Everyone agrees from the neck up, Lucy was gorilla-like. Her brain size, one-fourth the size of a human brain. Her jaw was U-shaped as opposed to the human v shape. Uh, typical of gorillas, her teeth were large, far larger than those in humans. From the neck down, every feature was likewise non-human. Australopithecines, including those which are thought to be much more recent and therefore should be more human-like, have long curved fingers adapted to swinging from tree limb to tree limb. Monkeys have really long fingers. Oh, let's see. Uh, talk about the upright posture. You can read the article for yourself. Lucy was probably a chimpanzee-like animal, 42 inches tall, 3 foot 5. 40 inches tall, 40 pounds, okay, roughly. People argue about that. They didn't find enough leg bones to make it and figure out exactly the height. About as tall as a 6-year-old. Lucy, also a Pithecus afarensis fossil found in 1974, has been widely portrayed as supposedly ape-like ancestor of humans. Her small skull long arms and conical rib cage, the rib conical shaped like a cone, okay, where humans is not shaped that way. The, the rib cage around the lung is, uh, lungs and internal organs is shaped like a cone in monkeys. Uh, she had, they said the knee showed she walked upright, which is baloney. This knee wasn't found near the, near the rest of the skeleton, the knee joint. Let's see, Lucy, a marvelous specimen. The knee joint, this is the Hadar knee, found a year earlier, 70 meters lower, what, 200 feet lower in the rock strata, not in the same layer, and a mile away. Look, if that knee, a mile away, 70 meters lower, goes to that Lucy. It's, yeah, like, it's not It's not Lucy's, that's for sure. I'd like it's, to know um, if the was going to hit that chimpanzee. That's what I want to know. Yeah. It, they were claiming for this knee, the first knee that was found at the Hadar location that started the whole investigation here, or really got them digging, was, and they claim it was Johansson or whoever found it, but it was actually found by a woman. But this piece is belongs to a different site and isn't from the Lucy site. But they're using the word Lucy there in a colloquial sense. We're like referring to all the afarensis. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like not necessarily Lucy's knee, but the knee of the Lucy kind, you know. Well, the atheists have a, a channel, the Talk Origins Archive. Uh, Jim Lippert said, Creationists make a claim that Donald Johnson found the knee joint of Lucy in a location 60 to 70 meters lower and three kilometers away. They have sometimes yeah. gone, they've sometimes gone to add the claim. Only under questioning did Johansson admit that the knee joint was found a mile away. To the best of our knowledge, this admission has not appeared in print. The claim is used mm -hmm. by, okay, well, it's true. It was found a mile away. If they think it's the same type of animal, okay, that's fine. But they put them all together. It was, the, go ahead. Right, you're correct, you're correct. It was Johansson admitting to the fact that they had found a Lucy knee. So it was him using the colloquial term Lucy, because he had to think about it in this, in this situation. Uh, this, is a, this is one of uh, the misconceptions that have been pushed around by a lot of, by a lot of creationists, even AIG here, where, where the first discovery of the knee was part of Lucy, when it was AL2, I can look it up. But the thing yeah. is, if you look at the Lucy skeleton, you'll realize she has no knee. 
And then you'll know that that knee joint is separate from the Lucy, um, actual the Lucy mix itself. So you're right. And, and Johansson did admit that they found the knee 70 meters away, but it was a different knee and it wasn't one that he'd attributed to, to Lucy itself. But here you have an idea where they're claiming that this knee bone must belong to the same population or the same animal okay, the same kind of animal, this hypothetical being that they think Lucy is, you know? So again, they're making these huge leaps in logic. They're connecting evidence that necessarily shouldn't be connected, you know? And I mean, it's Lucy's 50th anniversary this year. So I think we should give Lucy a proper anniversary and take this thing down. Uh, and I think we should give this a good overview, my friend. Give her a proper burial. Yeah, put her back. There you go. One of the arguments was he said the femur was angled, proving she was becoming a human. See that you're coming off your knee joint up to your hips, your femurs, your thigh bones have to angle out, okay? On chimpanzees, they go straight up to the hips. Their hip, hip, hip is narrower. He said that proves she's becoming a human. Well, man has an angled femur. Lucy had an uh, angled femur. Apes have a straight femur. But tree-climbing monkeys have an angled femur. And Lucy's fingers certainly ind indicate it's a tree-climbing monkey. Clydes of a Bonesdale horse are slightly bigger than a regular horse. The fact that Lucy's bones are slightly bigger doesn't prove it's becoming anything. Uh, let's see. Louis St. Louis Zoo uh, had Lucy on display with human feet when no feet or hand bones were found. This is for indoctrination, not education. They know it's a misrepresentation. I got a picture I, found, I just used today, and we'll quit here, brother, of, of all the different skull shapes, of all the different faces they've made off of just that one fossil lucy there's a good artist can make you can make you look like anything okay java man heidelberg man let me find uh where i put that today i got so much stuff in my slide presentation there's a good book called yeah jack Kowazo did a great book bones of contention on, on this topic uh, uh these bones are still in very much contention do we sell that one bones of contention uh well, I got it in here somewhere. Uh, I found today all the different uh, faces that have been made for Lucy by artists based on the very same skull. One skull. What have they made out of that? Let's see. Ah, here it is. Okay. Uh, here's Jack Coazzo's book. Let's see. Nine. I think we lost the sound on that one, doctor. I can't hear you on my end either. So. The government's on us for that Lucy stuff. Sign slow. Oh, we're back on. There okay. we go. There we go. Yeah, we're done anyway. The Neanderthals are another example. All of these so-called cavemen, they're missing the entire point. If they find some bones that look like they're half human, half ape, all you know is from the bones, it died. No apes today can produce other than baby apes. Why do they think these ones in the dirt can do it? It's just crazy. So 
Mark, thanks for joining us. SeaScienceFilmLab.com. Is that your website? Yes, sir. And I would like to add just before we end what you were saying about the faces, all these faces that they've imagined. Even the skulls are imagined. You know, they're all a fabrication. Okay, yeah. you've got these pieces of skull that they found in the ground and then they glue them to a mold, a specialized frame that's shaped like an Australopithecus skull. Okay, it's all a fabrication. It's all a story. I just want to end with that. But yeah, Sea Science Film Labs here. Thank you so much for having me on, Dr. Hovind. You're the best. I really appreciate all that you do, the ministry. Stay strong and God bless, sir. Amen. Yeah, they want so bad to be monkeys so that there's no God telling them what to do. As a guy said, here, Brother Hogan, let me pose for a picture. I look at the Neanderthal skull, big eyebrow ridge, even hairy chest. Look at that, big eyebrow ridge. Does that prove ape-like? Uh, no. I, I, I spent another two hours on this. I've watched, cover, watch my video number two of my creation seminar series where I cover the so-called cavemen. The large eyebrow ridge, your brow, eyebrow ridge never stops growing. The more you eat and the longer you live and chew the masseter muscles and the frontalis muscle, they pull on the cheekbones and on the eyebrow ridge, and the bones enlarge in response to more muscle pulling on it. A bodybuilder not only gets bigger muscles, he gets bigger bones. Well, the Bible says the people live to be 900. If you could live to be 900, your eyebrow ridge would stick out like that. It's got nothing to do with evolution, becoming a monkey, or coming from a monkey. And Boy, that guy. Let's see, how about this one? Oh, there you go. Is he, uh, is he ape? Or this guy? Or this guy? No. It's all this is pure propaganda to get you to doubt God's word. The Bible says we're made in God's image. You're going to answer to God one day. Stand before him. The light he shows gives you, you're going to answer for it. Have you accepted him as your savior? If so, what are you doing? You're part of his family now. Get to work. Take out the trash. Make your bed. You know, Feed the dog. Do something. Everybody in the family ought to have a job. You want a God's kids? Well, get to work. Find something to do. Okay, questions or comments, brother, and we'll quit. Yes, sir. Uh, you're really good yesterday at Standing for Truth. I appreciate you defending the truth and the King James. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Yep. Uh, let's see. Cry, cry baby. Are you going to get saved? Come on now. Like all the apes, we have large brains. You're not talking for yourself here, are you, cry baby? Uh, have large brains. Vision, more important than sense of smell. Hands adapted for grasping, complex social tools. We share over 95% of our genome with apes. We are apes. Crybaby, I believe you are. I am not. Okay? Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, Lucy is a result of millions of dollars in research funding. That's the truth. Let's see. Uh, pie, whatever that is. No, I can't compress water or other matter, but a neutron star or black hole can. Really, can you demonstrate that? Can you prove that? That's imagination. You think all the stars, there's enough stars out there that we know about that every human on Earth could own 11 trillion stars. And you want to press all that into a dot the size of an atom. Think, do you ever think, think about it. Come on now, that's dumb. Okay. Have you heard of uh, Orangapindek? Maybe a Lucy-like animal in Sumatra. Maybe a species that is still alive and not yet discovered, not a missing link. Yeah, it could be any of those, right. Let's see, Daryl. Did evolution think the millipedes needed an extra 100 legs? I'd like to know, the centipede and the millipede, how do they know which leg to move first? You want to confuse one sometime? When you see one sitting there, say, hey, which leg do you move first? They'll be there for all day trying to figure out, what? how do I walk? <laughs> oh, brother. Well, I can atheist. See Science Film Labs there. Thank you so much, Mark, for joining us here. Come visit Honest Word Adventureland. All right, that's it. Yes, Thank you so much. Tomorrow, comments on comments and question answer time. Bring your best, bring your best evidence for evolution. I'll bet there's none. Zero, zip, nada, zilch.